it starts with gathering the proper info, but there is also like other things that are less advantageous, especially for foreigners. So you first gather your information, and then the most important is to find the right person to help you. Especially as a foreigner, you need someone to help you because of the language, the language barrier. And also, yeah, like we, we don't understand every rule in Thailand, right? So you really need someone to support you. And that's really the main point to start your company is like your local support. While the world's still asleep, we're already grinding. Walking for a street, big city lights so blinding. Learning and hustling in this relentless game. The emerge parts next up, we're breaking the frame. Uh, yeah, while the world's still asleep, we're breaking the frame. We all been uh, grinding. The emerge parts next up, we're breaking the frame. Big city lights. Yeah. Woo! So blinding. Check it out. Okay. Yeah. So first off, thank you so much, Louise and Amarine, for being on the Emerge podcast. Uh, you know, it's long overdue. We've been trying to get you guys on for a while now, but we finally have you. So uh, let's just get started with understanding what you guys are doing in Thailand, what's the company about, and where, what stage is, is it currently in? Um, well, we are super happy with Amarine to be on Emerge podcast. So thanks for having us. Um, it's our pleasure. So what- what are we doing in Thailand? So um, for myself, I've been in Thailand for five years now. Um, so it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, so you're, um, you're veterans of Thailand now. So that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> yes, exactly. And we are um, setting up a company which is a C2C marketplace um, mm-hmm. that allows people to buy and sell secondhand items uh, easily. So it's really a way to extend the life cycle of any items from clothing to home furniture, um, kids' toys, pet care, books, anything, you name it. So you can buy and sell them on our platform. Wonderful. So uh, where are you guys from originally, if you don't mind me asking? Yes, so we are both French, uh, Louise and I, but we never met before, right? We met in Bangkok uh, four years ago through Friends in Common. So, yeah, let's say that we are two Frenchies in Bangkok that decided to start a company together. That's amazing. But uh, so what were you guys doing at the time? Were you like working in a job or did you have businesses before this? So from my side, my background is not at all in tech. Uh, I was working for a hotel company in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. So um, the head offices are in Bangkok and I was working there for four and a half years. Um, managing the loyalty program and leading events and also partnerships for for the brand. So Mm -hmm. that's what I was doing. And I left my job there um, in January 2024, so almost nine nine months ago now, um, to pursue one of my dreams, which was to take kind of a gap year, which ended up being a gap uh, semester, like quarter, uh, because I took three months off to travel um, like kind of around Asia. And during that time, ideas were flourishing, and that's how we discussed with Amarin to set up the company. Wonderful. Amarin, what about you? Were you also in a job at that point? Yeah, yeah. so me, I'm still currently working uh, with another company in Thailand. Uh, it's, uh, mm-hmm. So me, I'm more, like, I'm more the person that was in the tech side already, right? So I already work for e- e-commerce projects. Uh, I've helped uh, e-commerce launching uh, in Africa, uh, also in Thailand. So yes, I'm more the one that is related to, to that area. And that was great actually to, to have it started with Louise because she's more on the wellness side, let's say, and then the sustainability and I'm more the tech person. So I think like together it's, um, gathered together, it's great. And, uh, yeah, so for my part, I still, uh, work at the moment. That's amazing. So, uh, I think the, uh, the most important part about, you know, quitting a job to start a business full time is the amount of risk that you take, right? So t- tell me about the C2C marketplace that you're building. What what drove you to thinking that, oh, this is our million dollar idea, that I can quit my job and start this business? So are, does competition exist in this market or is this, some, is this something brand new? Okay, so let's be clear first. Uh, in Th- As two foreigners in Thailand, for us, it's not easy to quit our job right away, right? Because to stay in Thailand, we still need to have a work permit. So there is more risk, like more risk than if we were doing a, a business in our own country. Uh, so that's, that's the first risk and risk. And why did we decide? Uh, yeah, we actually just decided to start this project with just a, a, let's say a hobby, a passion in common. And by talking about it, like around us, we realized that actually it was something that was missing in Thailand, but that also that people would really like it. 
And yeah, I think, yeah, the, the, the two combined together, like we're like, okay, I think we have to, to create this, right? There is a demand, the, there is an opportunity, so, so let's go for it. And if it works, it works, right? It's, it's good to take risk. Definitely. So what other, uh, you know, marketplaces exist in Thailand other than, you know, the ones that you're creating? Do, do, do they have marketplaces in Thailand? Yeah, so when we were thinking about creating yours, it really was about filling a gap that we, we experienced as, like, personally as um, two expats here. So the main one was, you know, when you move in and out to the country, you tend to always uh, look for your plates, the cups. I don't know, uh, if you want to cook your pasta, you need the pot. So you always end up going to IKEA and buying a new one. But what's the point? Because we, there are so many people in Thailand that comes and goes. So we thought, okay, we need a platform that makes these transactions easy and that are user-friendly. Mm. At the moment in Thailand, people use a lot of Facebook groups, right. uh, which are great, like, and they've helped us massively. So thank you to those people that created those groups. Uh, the issue with Facebook is that you don't have much security in terms of payment transaction. You have to show your personal data. It's not really secure. Um, you need to book also, like, you know, the grab, grab is usually people what they use if they want to, you know, um, get the delivery, the shipping options. Um, so they have this option, which, which is great, but just not ideal, not very user-friendly in order to, you know, search the categories and the entire negotiation process. And there are a few other uh, marketplaces um, that exist, like ID. Um, so, but they are not very, I would say, user-friendly for expats, which is kind of sure. the front market that we target. Um, and what we, so the idea with, from Amarin and, and myself was really to, how can we make a platform that is really extremely simple? We want something easy, something convenient. The beauty of living in Thailand is that everything is easily accessible 24 seven. So we want to bring that convenience into like the re-commerce of, um, of items. That's it's definitely something that's needed for uh, you know expats specifically who are leaving and they've got like a lot of stuff that they want to get rid of quite quickly, and uh, you know if something like this marketplace doesn't exist, then that's definitely you know a gap in the market that you guys can take advantage of. Uh, you mentioned that you're trying to bring in payments on this as well. So how how does that work? The user, uh, you know, the buyer makes the payment on the app, and then you guys disperse the money to the seller. Yeah, so actually the, what we want to do is to make sure that there is no hassle for both the, the seller and the buyer, right? So we are taking care of every transaction. So like we can make sure that the transaction is safe. Uh, you know, sometimes on Facebook, like you, you want to buy, I don't know, a, a sofa and then people are like, like, yeah, okay, just, just send me, I will talk in dollar because I don't know if you're familiar with Thai, but Thai bats. But, uh, okay, send me $50, but are you sure I am going to receive the order? Or, you know, it's sometimes it's not safe to send a big amount of money through a not securized platform. So mm -hmm. what we want to make sure is that with our platform, the payment will be safe. So we are dealing with all the payments, like the buyer is sending the money to us. And when the transaction is complete, we are like sending the money to the, to the, the seller. And are you guys handling the logistics side as well of, you know, picking up the item and delivering it to the buyer? So for the delivery, so we're not going to go there in person to pick up the item. Of course. No, we would love to, but uh, we cannot be everywhere at the same time. Uh, but we definitely, so one of the features that we also incorporate into yours um, is to have um, the shipment, the delivery manager. So we have our team that will, with a logistic partner, um, will be handling the order of a driver. So let's, so let's, maybe we can give a concrete example. So I'm a buyer. I want to buy. Um, I want to buy a Marin's uh, sofa. So I will make an offer. If the price is negotiable, if a Marin accepts it. She wants to sell it. I pay. The money is held into yours uh, bank account. And now a Marin can choose. Okay, she has three days to choose when she can dispatch the order. So she will select that, for example, tomorrow she's available between 12 and 2 p.m. for the driver to come and collect it. So our team at yours will then contact our logistic partner and they will come between 12 and 2 p.m. Uh, to pick up the sofa bed from Amarin and then I will receive it probably around 6 p.m. Um, and then once I confirm the order then and I'm happy with my sofa, then we can release the transaction and the seller, so Amarin will get her funds. I'll be happy on my new sofa and 
I, Amarine didn't have to book the driver. She didn't have to do any of this because our team is handling that process. And we mm. do work on, um, so the fares that we apply are also uh, always competitive fares. So we always look, you know, at the average fare. So right now we'll be launching only Bangkok and not Nantaburi area, which is kind of like greater Bangkok. Mm -hmm. uh, and the aim, of course, is later on to expand, but we'll definitely, we are handling the, the WB. Now, I think this takes out the risk from every, you know, purchase made online because you don't know whether you're going to get the item. You don't know whether the payment's going to go through. Uh, there's, of course, the, always the risk that the item is not going to match uh, the, you know, the, the pictures that were shown. But in those cases, I don't think you guys can pretty much do anything about that, right? No, actually, we can do something about that. So, like, that's the point of, uh, of yours, right? Is to make sure that we remove any risk that any seller or buyer can have with, like, the, just the basic uh, marketplace on Facebook. So, for example, if on Facebook, like the sofa that uh, Louise buys for me is like destroyed or not as uh, expected, you know, like I can decide to never reply to Louise and okay, she will have to deal with the sofa that she got. But uh, if you buy it on yours, then Louise will start a ticket on yours, right? She will start a complaint and then saying, okay, the sofa is not the color that was displayed online or is it, is it is destroyed? So from that, yours can dis um, take care of it, contact the seller, make sure that, okay, the a return process is going to be uh, engaged. And so like, yeah, we can solve this issue as, uh, very, as soon as possible. Okay, yeah, because you'll be holding on to the payment anyway until the transaction is yeah. successfully completed, right? Yeah, okay, that makes yeah, sense. So this, yeah. yeah. But, but of course, if, if let's say, uh, okay, this time I don't buy a sofa, I want to buy a new dress. <laughs> if the dress, in the end, not to my liking, in that case, the return policy does not apply. If you just don't like the idea or the size doesn't fit, then unfortunately, we, we can't do it. Of course, there are only certain situations where you can, you know, cater to a refund request. Not every request can be catered to. That's definitely <laughs> understandable. Uh, but let's talk more about starting this business in Thailand. And I know that, you know, uh, moving from a work permit to your own is, of course, a challenge. And it's I wouldn't say it's a challenge. It's like extensive work. Uh, so have you guys registered the company in Thailand already? Yeah. Yeah, Fantastic. yeah, we have a... Yeah. We have ahead, registered sorry. under, uh, yeah, we have registered, like, there is two ways of making, of starting a company in Thailand. There is the BOY and the Thai Limited, and we have uh, decided to go for the Thai Limited. So we are a Thai company registered in Thailand already. Wonderful. And at what stage will this company be able to issue work permits for you guys? So in Thailand, uh, when you're a Thai Limited company, a registered Thai Limited company, you can have a work permit uh, and there is a quota. So for one, yeah. uh, for a year, you have to we need to get for uh, Thai employees. So uh, we are aiming for, so we will start our recruitment phase from October onwards. Um, and that's our aim to then be able to have the work permit. If we go through BOI, which is our, I would say, phase two of our project is to also go through BOI because we are uh, eligible for the, so it's Bureau of Investment um, and they have a digital kind of, um, uh, section. So if you're a digital e-commerce platform, you can get support. In that case, you can get a work permit and other benefits with BOI, including some um, corporate taxes exemptions, for example, which is a great, I think, way to support startups and, and of course. customers to come to Thailand. So it's, it's really great. And in that case, um, but you need to bring more capital. So you need yeah. to bring more capital and then you can get the work permits much, easy, much more easy. As a digital um, platform as well, if it goes through BOI, you need to have a Thai um, uh, tech person. So we will be looking into like, you know, CTO, having a CTO uh, in the future in phase two. And in that case, to be BOI eligible, you need to have uh, a person uh, from Thai nationality. Yeah, I think that's the next question I was about to ask anyway. So who's building the app right now? Do you have a, like a freelancer or do you have someone hired already? So we, we are currently working with a in company based in India. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's called Aquarius Technology. Uh, so let's say they are kind of freelance, right? They are not hired by us. We are working on a contract terms. Uh, so yes, at the moment, this is an um, a Indian company. And then let's see how it's going to develop, right? This is only the, it's going to be only the first phase of our website. So yeah. And, and what platform are you building it on? Is it like hard coded or is it some platform? 
so it's quite ready. And so at the moment, we are only doing a, a web app, so mobile friendly web app. The reason right, why we're right. doing it is because we, um, first of all, because we are building the MVP at this stage and um, we are investing our own money. So we start with this. Uh, the, the reason why is to also get uh, as much data as we can once we, once we have the MVP launch to really gather this information, gather the data, and then we can move into phase two and build a proper app, a mobile app. Uh, which but I'm assuming that the first part of phase two would be to acquire funding. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. That's necessary. Yeah. So the funding will also come yeah. with the data that we want to get. Let's just show you know, how, I mean, we believe, we know the project will, will is, there is demand for it, but having concrete data on it will definitely be a big part. So, so will you? So, of course, this is the journey of every you know tech startup that you know you start creating an MVP, you get that done from freelancers, then you start you know rolling it out as an MVP and start getting some numbers. Once you have some numbers, then you go to investors and ask for seed or pre-seed money. Uh, do you think you're going to be looking at investors inside Thailand or from abroad? Well, like wherever you know, we are not uh, close to any uh, opportunity. We just uh, want to make sure that we will find like the, the person, like uh, the investor that will support us the best, believe in our project, have the same uh, vision as us. And that from that, it can be in Thailand or anywhere else. Yeah. Because I'm trying to understand the startup ecosystem in Thailand, right? So uh, have there been a lot of, you know, tech startups lately that have gotten funding in Thailand? Yes, yes. And actually, Thailand has, I think the ecosystem for startups in Thailand is really booming. Um, and, you know, just by showing the example of the BOI as well, like the government is also supporting more and more, uh, you know, small businesses, small enterprises. There are a lot of things happening in the in the tech space here. Um, and so I think the keeping also the money within Thailand is one of the one of the reasons also why we are building yours is you know um, instead of buying cheaper products that would be shipped you know from perhaps china or from malaysia like having this secondhand marketplace would allow the you know things to stay within the country to within within time but uh, yeah there's been uh, tech startups that have received funding and um, hopefully we will be one of them as well very absolutely <laughs> absolutely now th th again I, I would i would definitely say that the idea does have a lot of merit and uh, you know if you're able to get the numbers for this it would be very uh, you know appealing to an investor whether they're from thailand or from abroad because this idea does you know answer a problem and that's you know the risk of doing all these online uh, you know uh, sales and purchases uh, but other than that so Let's talk about phase two, right? So, because I, I want to understand the the aspect of running this business in Thailand, but you guys are currently, of course, in the process of building it. So, when it comes to running the business uh, and hiring people, do you think that you will primarily hire, you know, local Thai, uh, you know, professionals, or would you be looking for for you know people from outside Thailand to work in your company? Yeah, so actually, I think both Louise and I agreed that we really want to make sure that your stay a Thai company and we really want to make sure to hire like Thai talent because uh, mm -hmm. in Thailand, you have like so many talent and creative people. So like, I'm sure we can find like a lot of people that would be like great asset for yours. So of course, our, our primary uh, idea would be to go for to hire Thai. But obviously, we are never close to if there is like a talent from abroad, like everyone is welcome. Uh, and we, we just want to make sure to also have like, the best talent in our company and to have like uh, the best uh, work environment possible. Absolutely. Uh, but of course, at the moment, you guys wouldn't have an office space, right? So, but in phase two, you would, right? Yes, yes. Also, we, Got, we, yeah. we mm -hmm. both also love, um, I think, working with people, like even though it's a tech company. Um, and from my side, coming from a hospitality background, I really value you know, bringing people together and, and having an office really em empowers creativity, exchange of ideas, gives everybody a voice to share. Like, you know, the coffee machine is so, like the coffee place is so important. You know, you could really brainstorm. So that's definitely part of phase two is to also have a space where our team can bond, can create relationships and, um, and grow the business together. Uh, there is so much you can do online, I think. 
Absolutely. So uh, about the company incorporation itself, right? So you mentioned that you're already, you know, past that stage. Uh, as some, also, of course, you guys would have an advantage of knowing the process already because you've been living in Thailand, you know, for a while now. But imagine, uh, you know, an entrepreneur who hasn't been in Thailand before. How difficult is the process of incorporating your company? So, like, as you have to find the right info, right? So for us, both Swiss and I, we did never like start a company in Thailand before. So we have first to know, okay, what kind of company you can create. So it starts with gathering the proper info and then you can make your choice. Oh, BOY, you can do BOY. Sometimes it's more convenient. You have like more advantages, but okay, it's more, co it's more costly and it's like take like more time to, to, to start your company. And the Thai Limited, okay, it's like, faster to to start your company it is cheaper but there is also like other things that are less advantageous especially for foreigner so you first gather your information and then the most important is to find the right person to help you especially as a foreigner you need someone to help you because of the language the language barrier and also yeah like we we don't understand every rule in thailand right so you really need someone to support you and that's really the main point to start your company is like your local support Definitely. So, of course, I'll plug in Emmer Hub here. Again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, of course, uh, you know, for a foreigner coming into a market, especially in Southeast Asia, it's definitely, you know, required for them to have a partner they can trust who can give them the right information and guide them. But then there are certain cases where foreigners can't register companies in certain domains as well. Right. Did you guys encounter anything like that? On our end, we did not have uh, much challenges. I mean, we have challenges on a daily basis. Like, for example, today we, <laughs> we have our, but it's part of the process. So I think that's also, we have to enjoy every step of the journey. Like it's, I think it's what we, we both love as well. But for example, if you want to open your corporate bank account, um, so we are both, of course, directors. We open a corporate bank account, but I wasn't here when I'm opening the account. So now we want to add uh. my name, authorized signatory. Uh, but we need to do, so we went to the bank today and they said, no, no, you need a new document and new this and new that. So it's, yeah, we, we, we kind of lose some time, uh, some time because uh, it's not always very clear, the process. So I mm -hmm. think the advice for any entrepreneur that comes to Thailand for the first time is be flexible and, and patient and, you know, it will come together eventually but just you know just i think patience is, is key and uh, yes yeah but, but does that have to do with the law as such or is it like working with thai people that is different no i would say it's from like the administrative side right because in, in the thai administration and i guess maybe everywhere in the world like you are required to always have a lot a lot of paper a lot of document to sign and then it True. doesn't have to be more than three months and more than this more than that so i guess it would be everywhere the same like we also never like build a company anywhere else like so we, we don't know how it could be in, whether in the, it is in the unite united arab emirates or in france like so at the moment, we only know about Thailand and we could say that the administrative is like taking a lot of time and requires a lot of paper. But I guess it could be everywhere else. And actually working with Thai people is like very easy sometimes, like except the language barrier. But otherwise, they are really helpful and, and, and they do a, a great job to help us most of the time. Yeah, there's something that I've heard from a, a couple of my guests, uh, you know, who work in Indonesia who find it like a big surprise in terms of the culture of work and the way that communications done, the way that works generally handled when they come from outside. But for you guys, of course, that would be different because you've been here for a while. So you already understand the way that people work, right? Yeah, I think it's, um, it's and also from living abroad, it's always, I think with, if you show kindness and respect, I think with anyone around the world, people will always, um, be helpful to you and um, of course we have a better understanding of you know the Thai culture because we've been here for for, for a while we've also worked with Thai colleagues you know, in my previous jobs I'm already in her, in her job as well at the moment so yeah I mean we again I think there are Thai people who are very helpful it can be sometimes challenging uh, I'm not gonna say it's easy every day but uh, it's a culture that is here to, to help each other and um, even even in, in, in business. So, so we are quite lucky. 
to be setting up the That's company. Good. So, so in terms of so starting the company, we've, we've established that it's kind of tricky. You need a partner to do it. And of course, there's a lot of paperwork that goes into it. But eventually, it's not impossible for a foreigner to start a company if they're, they've got the right idea and they've got the right partner. But in terms of actually relocating to Thailand. So when you guys moved, I, I'll ask you know both of you individually because I'm sure your experiences were very different. Uh, so what was it like moving from France to Thailand? And what was the, you know, what were some of the shocks that you had when you got here? So I, I personally never moved from France to Thailand. Actually, before that, uh, I was uh, in Canada and in Togo. So I've never lived in France. I'm just a, oh, a French person. Right. So I'm, oh, I've always been used to like being in different places and dealing with different people. So, yeah, I have to say that was not like a really something new or difficult to move to Thailand actually it was pretty easy like moving to Bangkok like Bangkok is an amazing city there is everything and Thai people are so nice so yeah uh, and there there was not really challenge like as just as moving there like no challenge so did you did you have a job offer before you moved or did you just come yeah, here yeah, on a tourist visa yeah you got a job no offer. no, no I, yeah yeah I had a job offer and that yeah that's why I moved here yeah I guess that would have smoothed uh, you know the things out a lot if you had like an offer and then you came in and then everything's pretty much set out already, right? That must have made the process easier. Yeah, yeah I guess so, Louise, uh, it's oh, the same for you, yeah. right? You also arrived on the job offer. Yes, so for me, I was in London before. I was working in London and um, I was tired of the, the very high rent of London. The weather? <laughs> no, honestly, I sometimes I miss London weather because Bangkok is hot and humid, so I yeah. miss cold. <laughs> of London um, but uh, I moved to so I had a job I was I was in hospitality management in London uh, and for, for two and a half years I was there so and I had uh, I did do an internship in Hong Kong back in 2014 that was my first time in Asia and I, I fell in love with it so I thought one day I want to go back to to this part of the world so when I moved um, it was it was a cultural shock I think for, for me personally because um, I had been to Thailand, but like on a backpack trip many years before. And, um, but in the end, as Amarin said, like moving to Thailand is quite easy because you don't like, for example, finding an apartment is very easy here. You don't need to go through like, like in the UK, for example, I remember going through a credit check. Uh, so we had to yeah. do all the credit check, all the, all the records here in Thailand. You, can, you just have to do like a two months deposit basically. So it's quite easy. Um, and then adapting to the, I think adapting to the Thai culture, I always kind of think that it takes one year to get used to a country. Um, mm -hmm. If you see like Bangkok as well, uh, it's such a massive city and to yeah. know the kind of secret corners of the town. Um, if you just stay on Sukhum Beach Road, then you're going to probably think like, oh, I don't like Bangkok, but then just go a little bit off the grid into the small soils. Uh, it's very green. It's very peaceful. The, the, the FNB scene here is amazing, uh, wellness scene as well, amazing uh, infrastructures. Um, so yeah, I think it was not too hard, but still, it took a, for me, it took a good year to get used to it. I like what you said about Sukhumvit because I feel like my experience in Thailand was the same because I came to Thailand last December and I only stayed on Sukhumvit 15, I think, and we had a hotel there. We stayed there for a couple of days. And the, the, the most I explored was you know, going to the weekend market, which I absolutely love because it was, uh, you know, dirt cheap. It was, you know, shop till you drop kind of situation. I couldn't carry any more bags. <laughs> so it's definitely, it's definitely cheap li living in Thailand, right? Yeah. I mean, a little bit less now, obviously when I arrived eight years ago, it was way cheaper to than, than what it is today. Uh, yeah, actually, unfortunately, like uh, Thailand is also subject to inflation, like everywhere in the world. So, uh, yeah, it is obviously still cheaper than many places in the world, and but it's it's not that cheap anymore. Okay, so that's a myth that needs to be busted, right? That it's not as cheap as people might think it is. But then again, you're from Canada, so Canada has become ex really expensive to live in, right? Oh, I, I just studied in Canada for four years and I haven't got back, so I. I yeah, I cannot yeah. say much about it now. <laughs> sure, but it's also sure. the, the Thai baht as a currency, which um, 
has really changed over the past five years. Like I remember yeah. when when I moved five years ago, the exchange rate by back to euro was 0 0.30, 0, mm -hmm. 0, and now it's 0, 0, 0.025, 0, 0, 0.026. So this has also um, impacted a lot. But I guess it's good for tourism okay. because then people from these parts of the world can come to, to Thailand and, and see more value out of it. That's true. That's true. Well, uh, again, it's definitely a cheaper place to live. It's uh, got that got a lot of tourists coming in, a lot of foreigners coming in, which makes the place really great. Uh, but now let's let's talk a bit about your journey in starting this company, right? Because I know that Thailand is not exactly conservative when it comes to uh, you know women uh, working and starting businesses. So, did you experience a certain ease of starting your business as women entrepreneurs? Oh, wow, that's a great question. I never <laughs> thought about it. Um, um, I mean, it's a I good thing say... that you it's it's a good thing that you haven't thought about it because that shows that there is no difference, right? No, exactly. And what I could say is that what I experienced in my company here, so the company that I worked, like I never felt any difference between uh, like women and men. Like I always felt that I was like treated the same way. Uh, obviously, I only worked for one, like, let's say one kind of company here, so I cannot say much, but I never really experienced even from partners or like new businesses that I was like talking to. I've never felt any difference. And also now starting the company, like I didn't think that there was any problem where we felt, oh, okay, this happened to us because we are women or something. So well, that's pretty amazing. Luis, has your experience been the same? Yeah, I think Thailand as a culture is is... I don't see any inequalities between men and women, at least in the workplace. Um, I'm not sure about you know salaries or things like that, how, how, it, how it is here, but uh, I think men and, and women all work here in, in Thailand and I've never experienced any form of sexism in a way or, um, no, I think it's, it's a very respectful culture. And, and actually I, I'm always saying how impressed I am every time I you know, go back to France, you can really see that uh, it's it's a country where um, they really sp split the tasks and they don't. Um, there is no like minority in between men and women, and it's 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 frankly beautiful to see. But everybody is working. Definitely, and that's that's pretty much the theme of Southeast Asia that you see men and women actively working in in, in all professions. Correct. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I can say also is that there is actually a lot of uh, female entrepreneur in Bangkok. Like there is a lot of uh, women in entrepreneurship club, a lot of like uh, events for women in, in, in business. And we also know around us like so, some uh, great uh, women that start their business. So I guess, yeah, it's very uh, woman business friendly, let's say. But yeah, we, we, we will not have any. I, I'm sure we will not have any problem because of that. That's pretty impressive. So uh, in terms of where the company is headed, so w what's the timeline on uh, the launch of the MVP? W what are you guys looking at? So uh, in terms of timeline, we are so we're still in the process of finalizing the web app at the moment. Um, and we will be going through a phase of testing. So we want to take enough time to do all the testing because we don't want to launch until we are sure that the product is um, easily accessible, that it, that it does match all our criteria and that all the features that we want to launch with are available. So that would give us uh, around in November, that will be the launch of the MVP. So in about two months time now, um, I'm not going to give an exact date because we all know it can always change from one day to another. Of course. <laughs> we also want to be in time before uh, the Christmas holidays. Um, and so that's for phase one. From that point onward, we will have the first three months to really observe, uh, look at the trends, look at the data, really analyze how the first phase of the MVP um, is. And then from that point onward, we can start moving into phase two. Um, did I miss anything, Amarin? No, I think that that's pretty much it. Uh, just, yeah, we, we have changed our timeline. Like every month, actually, we are revising our timeline. So. <laughs> Yeah, we were very that optimistic happens, at the yeah. beginning, and then. Uh, but look, it's for it's for the best, right? Because it means we take more time to make sure that everything is perfect, that everything will work well. Um, yeah, so pretty much we are heading for November, and then we're gonna make sure that everything is like running smoothly. Uh, yeah, but I think you mm -hmm. you said pretty much everything. 
So in terms of uh, getting those first 500 or first 1,000 users, uh, what channels of advertising are you guys thinking? The conventional Facebook, Instagram, or are you going to you know, establish some partnerships for it as well? Yeah, so obviously the, 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 tradi the traditional way now, which is like the social media, that would be one of the first. But uh, also like we really want to focus on creating a community and which means like we're going to participate in a lot of events and make sure we're going to bring on board like very uh, meaningful partners with us or meaningful brands, uh, which actually Louise is like very good for that, right? This is her job and this is what she likes. So she will be really helpful on that point. Uh, so yes, the how we want to bring our first uh, users is to really like by creating this community and uh, make sure that, yeah, they also like the project and are going with us for the for the good reason. I don't know, Louise, maybe you want to say a little bit more about that? Yeah, I think also uh, we also have our network. So we value our our networks. Our friends, I think, will be... <laughs> actually, some a lot of our friends told us that they've been keeping in their closets a lot of items that they don't want to <laughs> That they want to that. sell. <laughs> yeah. So uh, before their condos explode, we will be launching the platform. Uh, I actually have... <laughs> But yeah, so we will also be activating our own network. Um, we are lucky and also, you know, lucky to have people around us that also support each other very much. So, so we'll be uh, looking into that, but there will be a mix uh, in between social media and also strategic partnerships uh, as well, you know, with like universities. So you have a lot of exchange students actually that do come to Thailand, to Bangkok every year. Um, the embassies mm -hmm. as well. You know, for relocation, so we do have a list of potential partners that uh, that we would like to to discuss with. Because again, it's about building that community, but it's also about um, kind of reshaping the way that consumers do shop nowadays, do purchase nowadays, and and Thailand is moving towards you no know, more sustainable uh, initiatives. I think the everybody here starts to really get involved in that and uh, having yours in as an addition um, to the offering will be, will be really beneficial and, and a great way to just bring everything together and have a 360 degree community that really cares about the environment and, and, and about uh, each other as well. I mean, overall, the strategy of it all and the business plan of it all is pretty sound. I, I can see that this has the potential of being something really huge uh, in the coming years or so. Uh, but yeah, let's let's take a step back and look at the general overall you know business environment. Because I'm trying to link this to that a lot of our audiences that listen to the Emerge podcast, they're people who want to start businesses in Thailand. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes they want to learn how the process is done by listening to stories from entrepreneurs like yourself. But oftentimes they're looking for ideas. So mm -hmm. Now that you've decided on starting yours, what were some of the other 15 ideas that you guys cut before coming to yours? No. <laughs> Zero. No. Zero. So it was just yours, nothing else. That's how, yeah. <laughs> That's, yours. That's amazing. You, you guys landed on your first idea and you're starting that company. That's good. But overall, I, I, I then asked that, you know, what other industries do you see in, in Bangkok or in Thailand at the moment that a foreign entrepreneur could invest in and, in your opinion, could get good returns? I think anything that is um, kind of sustainability, I don't know if it's what would work well, but I think that's what is necessary. Anything that is sustainability, tech, you know, tech sustainability, um, fintech as well, probably. Um, yeah, and also Bangkok is like a big uh, hub for Web3. So like uh, there is a lot of Web3 events, a lot of new Web3 companies. So right. I guess also this other, yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah, so, so, so what you're saying that, you know, there is room in the tech industry and, you know, sustainability as well that, you know, someone can look into. Okay, that makes sense. So, uh, so to, to summarize this conversation of your journey in starting this company, right? Because uh, that's what I really want to focus on because that's what my audiences would like to know as well. What are some of the things that you wish you knew before you started this journey of registering your company or starting your business in Thailand? Uh, 
Yeah, I would say that uh, the administration would not be that simple. But okay, but, let's say that sometimes sometimes it has triggers, but in the end, like everything went okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's nothing that comes in my mind right now. Maybe Luis, you. I think for me, it's like the because we are we are quite a particular business model. So let's say licenses can be a little bit tricky. Mm. We are still we have I think had about twelve different uh, companies that we contacted to understand and government offices to understand what kind of licenses we need. Um, so I think that's, yeah, having more clarity in, in, in terms of licenses and requirements because you might contact um, like a, a, a law firm, they will tell you you need a direct marketing agency and another law firm tells you, no, you don't need because there has been an, an amendment to the latest royal decree two weeks ago. But it's, it's yeah, so you sometimes you don't get clear answers. So uh, yeah, that's, that's a challenge that I think maybe it would be good to you to know before you even start. Um, and then I think it's, um, yeah, I feel like we, we, I remember at the beginning we said, oh, it's a very easy platform. <laughs> it doesn't take too much time. And the more we have the to-do lists and the more things add up. Uh, but I guess that's part of every entrepreneurial journey and we are at the beginning of it. So, so again, enjoying the process is, is the key. Yeah, there is like nothing that really like we were like, okay, if only we would have known or something like that. Like for the moment, everything is kind of smooth. And mm -hmm. we, yeah, we really enjoy the process, right? Sometimes it's a lot of work <laughs> yeah. or like, yeah, sometimes it's a lot of work or a lot of things that, okay, oh, wow, we thought about this, but actually we have to change or we, like, but yeah, in general, like everything is okay. At the moment, like we don't know what's, what's going to happen in the next months. No, it's, it's good that it's going smoothly so far. But uh, uh, Luis, I'll come back to you about these licenses. So other than the, you know, stable company registration, what other licenses do you guys require? What's the final verdict? Uh, but we still don't know. <laughs> 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 no. So, so uh, a general idea, what do you think you guys need? No, 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 we, we do not know. So there, there are, so depending on the, the items that you, so depending on the, which category of items that you sell on the platform, you can have um, licenses required. But for us, because we registered within a certain time, now we, we so with our e-commerce platform, we do not need to register for an e-commerce license. In the past, I know that companies had to, but when we registered the company, the law had just changed. So we were quite fortunate. So we do not need to mm -hmm. apply for e-commerce license on top of it. The only license that uh, is kind of a question mark be the direct marketing license, uh, but the rest we, for now, there is nothing else. Again, the laws are changing because also the ecosystem is changing in Thailand. More companies, there are- Of course. Everything is, is, is really evolving here and the law is following the trend. So we, we always have to be up to date and really keep um, looking at the latest laws and uh, license requirements. Okay, so I guess uh, a fair warning to anyone starting their businesses in Thailand would be, you know, keep an eye on the law, listen to your partners, and then do research on what's needed and what's not needed, because there can be wrong information out there. Perfect summary. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, that's what I do. But anyway, so uh, I, I'd like to, uh, you know, take this uh, episode towards uh, a conclusion. But before we do that... Uh, I, I'm sure that people who are listening, myself included, would love to see the Yours app up and running because I can see that it has a huge amount of utility. So uh, in, in a summary, I'd, I'd ask either one of you to do this. How do people, you know, when should people expect this to come out? How can they sign up and what should they look for from Yours? So like an elevator pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Luis, you want to do it? You want me to do it? I, I can start and you can fill me up. Uh, go, go ahead. So yours is a centralized platform where one can buy and sell secondhand items. So we make it very easy and convenient for individuals to actually list a pre-loved item from clothing to electronics, furniture, kids toys, your books. So everything is easily accessible through the web app. So the first launch will be November 2024. There will be a web app. Um, we will be sharing on our social media starting at the end of this month. So you can follow Now It's Yours TH 
on Instagram and maybe we can add the link into um, into the podcast, into the comments. We can, absolutely. And then we can sign up to our newsletter. So there will be a sign up page where you can sign up to stay up to date. We will have a special launch offer where you can sell your first item for free. So we will, there will be no processing fee taken from, from your first sale. Um, and yeah, anything else, Amari? No, we just uh, want to make sure to to have the to make the first e-commerce in Thailand, and uh, yeah, make sure that people can buy and sell very easily and with with not the with no more problem, right? Like safe. Fantastic. And again, I, sorry, go ahead. So I think our keywords are safety, accessibility, and just like user friendly um, and hassle free with delivery that you don't even need to manage because we will do it for you. No, again, in, in, in conclusion, I would definitely say that this idea that you guys have has the potential of being a million dollar business. And uh, I would, uh, you know, encourage you guys to further explore this, to further execute this. And, uh, you know, I would say that, you know, while luck favors the prepared, but you guys are preparing and you will definitely have a lot of good luck and a lot of good customers coming your way once this app launches. So all the best to both of you. Uh, I'm going to be in Thailand next year, hopefully. So I hope to see this app <laughs> up and running by yes, next I year. Yes. <laughs> we have to show you more, more areas to be COVID-15. <laughs> no, absolutely. I think I think I just definitely need to do that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, again, uh, Louise, Amarine, thank you so much for being on the Emerge podcast. I'm sure that uh, you know, the people that are listening would have learned a lot about, you know, starting a company, what they should look out for. And of course, the most important part, seeing that there is still room for creative ideas in the Thai market as evident in your journey. So thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you, thank you so very much for hosting us. That was uh, great. That was super, uh, yeah, interesting. It's, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Somebody Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> While the world's still asleep, we're already grinding. Walking for a street, big city lights so blinding. Learning and hustling in this relentless game. The emerge pods next up, we're breaking the frame. Uh, yeah. While the world's still asleep, we're breaking the frame. We are uh, grinding. The emerge pods next up, we're breaking.